If you like playing cards, you would love Mahjong. There's a link below the video to the lesson playlist so that you can learn how to play. I'll also leave a link there so that you can look into maybe buying a set at home so you can teach some family and friends. It's a really great activity and it keeps your mind active. If you are new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. And that way, you won't miss anything. Let's do some random pulls so you can see what it's like to play Mahjong. With Mahjong, you need to get four sets and a pair. The sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. The three in a sequence is called a chow. The three of a kind is called a pung. We're going to do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round, east, south, west, and north. Each player is in a seat, one, two, three, or four, east, south, west, and north. They correspond. So let's just say we're going to be in seat eight, which is north. You just count around the table. And that, incidentally, is not part of the game. It just randomizes where we're seated, just to keep the variables fresh for practice. As non-dealer, we get 13 tiles. So there's our 13. Let's see what we can make out of it. We have a wind, that's west, and a dragon, white dragon. Oh, there's a north and another north. North is our seat wind. If we get a three of a kind of our seat wind, we get score for that. It's called a fawn, which is basically like a point. So I think what I would probably try to do here is what's called a half flush. A half flush is one suit with winds and dragons. We only have four discards in the other two suits. There are three suits, cracks, bams, dots, and then we have the winds and dragons. There's four of everything, just like in a deck of cards. So I would discard these and try to make chows out of these. We have four, five, six, seven. So we need three, six, five, eight, and maybe a pair. We can pung the, uh, the north and hopefully draw in some more honors. So that's what I would do with this set of tiles. If we were to win with this, a half flush is three fawn. A pung of your own seat win is a fawn. So this would be a four fawn hand, which is decent. Let's do another one. So we're gonna say it's south round. And this time let's say we're in seat seven, which is west. Another non-dealer, so we get 13 tiles. Seat three is west and we have our own flower, so we'll get a fawn for that. Let's get a replacement. So we have a pair of norths again. Now north is not our seat, we're in seat three and it is south round, so we won't get score for the north, but it could help us get to a half flush. Let's see if we have a good set of one suit. We do have four cracks and that leaves us with five discards to clear to a half flush, which is not necessarily a good thing. If I can make a decision with four discards towards a given combination for a good score, I'd say that's a good start. This is a bit of a weak start because we have five discards. So we're gonna have to draw really well. The nice thing here is though, these are set up for chows. Four, five, one, three. This is what's called an inside weight. It's a bit, a bit of a weak weight. This is a side weight where we need a three crack or a six crack. That is a stronger weight to complete that. So we do have a bit of chow potential, but we have a lot of drawing to do for this one. Chow, chow, pung. That's what I would try to do here and try to draw in more cracks and then pair up those other honors. You can't really do much with single honors. You gotta pair them up in order to pung them. Again, a pung is three of a kind. So that's what I would do here. If we did a half flush with our seat wind, that would be a four fawn hand.
We are now on to the west round. This time, let's say we're in seat eight. So that would be north. Another non-dealer. This time we have two flowers. Unfortunately, three. Seat three, we're seat four. So that's not gonna help us too much. But we do get two replacements. So we got a west, a north. There's a white dragon, honors. And we have lots of bams. I think I would try for a half flesh. There's four offsuit tiles. That's not bad. So I would try for a half flesh here. Half flesh. Half flesh is three fawn, which is decent. There's some chow potential right there and right here, or we could even pung the twos. Half flesh. Okay, we'll do one more. This would be north round. And let's just say we're in seat seven, which is west. So we're non-dealer. For this one, we could totally play a half flesh again with dots and honors. Now these honors are all singles, so we would have to pair those up to make any use of them, but they sure are pretty. And then here we have two pair. We could pung and pung. So I think that's what I would do here. Get rid of these offsuit tiles, go for half flesh. Four discards towards half flesh is not bad. I hope that gives you a good idea of what it's like to arrange your hand and kind of make a plan. You gotta stay flexible though, because each pick and discard can change the trajectory of your hand, which is one reason why the game is so much fun. It's very flexible, fast paced, and again, it keeps your mind active. Give it a try if you haven't yet. You could even play online at Mahjong time. There's a link below the video to that as well. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the bell when you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss any opportunities to learn a new strategy or maybe pick up an inside of the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.